Dear students, this is Dr. Madhu Kamra from Durga Mahavidyalaya, Raipur, to speak on consonants. Now, you all know that consonantal sounds and vowels, together they make the English phonemes. You also know that apart from vowels and consonants, you have diphthongs which are also counted as impure vowels. So today, let us begin with consonantal sounds. Consonantal sounds are dependent sounds. They are 24 in number and they are characterized by a stricture. A stricture is a blockage which arrests the flow of the aggressive airstream. Aggressive airstream is the outcoming airstream. Aggressive airstream from making a smooth way out into the atmosphere. It is arrested somewhere. It is delayed. It is made to stand for a while before it is gradually or instantly released. So these are sounds characterized with the stricture. The stricture can be anywhere. It can be in the articulatory passage or it can be in the phonetary passage. So, let us start with the consonantal sounds. Consonantal sounds are commonly classified, as you see in the chart, into three categories. The first is degree of voicing, which I elaborate so that you can draw a difference between what is a voice sound and a voiceless sound. See there, when the thoracic muscles of your abdomen, which are also called diaphragm, gives a push to the lungs, then the air contained in it is thrown out of the air sacs. Now, in the process, it also reaches your voice box, which is also called larynx. Here you have two vocal cords and the gap between these two vocal cords is called glottis. The glottis can become smaller in size with the two vocal cords which are like a muscular hangings or flaps of your curtain are drawn together. So the air that comes out carries a frictional note. If you use this kind of an air stream, to produce a consonantal sound, it is called voiced because it has frictional tone in it. But when the aggressive airstream on reaching the larynx does not give a stimulus to the two vocal cords, they remain wide apart. And because of that, the glottis is wide enough a room for the air to pass out very smoothly. As a result, there is no friction and the consequent sound so produced of consonantal nature is called voiceless. So I hope now the difference between a voiced and a voiceless sound is very clear. Coming to the other category that is the manner of articulation. Now here you have a number of categories. As you see here on the slide, which is now, so the first category is called plosive. It is a shortened of the term explosive. Plosive sounds are produced when the aggressive airstream is arrested in the oral cavity, that is your mouth. Oral cavity, it is arrested here for some time and is suddenly released. This sudden release produces mild explosion, hence the naming plosive sound. So you have plosive sounds like p, b, t, d, k, and g. You have six plosive sounds. Second is affricates. Now affricates are much like plosives. The only difference is that the aggressive airstream which reaches the oral cavity 
is arrested here but released steadily as a result there is no explosion so you can now see that per burter the kurga are characterized when explosive sound but affricates are not marked with any explosive word so you have the example like ch and ch coming to the third category which is nasal you have sounds like m n now these three sounds they are produced when the aggressive a string finds its way out from the nasal passage because the soft palate which is also called velum drops down and the passage to the mouth is arrested is blocked so the a has to move out into the atmosphere through your nose next comes your lateral a lateral sound l is produced when the tongue is curled upwards towards the heart palate it stands there like a curtain and the aggressive a stream has to pass from the sides of the tongue rubbing against the rims of the tongue to come out into the atmosphere the next category is fricative fricative sounds are characterized by friction which is a rubbing sound you have sounds like f v th z s z r sh j and h next and the last one is semi vowels of glides for example you have w and y these two sounds are produced in a manner which seems much like vowel sounds for example if you say w the position of the lips is much like that of the rp vowel number 8 that is u but when you say y it is like e that is why they are called semi vowels or glide and the third one it is titled as place of articulation now place is where the consonantal sound is articulated the first category is bilabial you have p b m and w these are the four bilabial sounds and they are produced when both the lips the upper and the lower they work in collaboration the lower lip is active articulated because it moves towards the upper lip second is labiodental labio is lip it's a latin word for lip and dental is of course teeth so when the lower lip moves towards the upper teeth for example you have it in the case of f v you have labiodental sound so here the active and the passive articulators are the active ones one is the lower lip and the upper teeth is the passive now next is alveolar alveolar is the other name for your teeth ridge so when the tip of the tongue either touches or reaches the upper teeth ridge you have alveolar sounds for example sounds like t d s z r they are alveolar sounds so here the tip of the tongue is the active articulator and upper alveolar that is the teeth ridge is the passive articulator so you have seen categories uh, bilabial labiodental and now comes dental for example sounds like th and th when the tip of the tongue rises towards the upper teeth we have dental sounds so the tip of the tongue is the active articulator and the upper teeth they become the passive articulator now coming to palato alveolar you find that this has two active articulators and two passive articulators the active articulators is the tip of the tongue as well as the main body of the 
tongue. And the passive articulators are your uh, teeth ridge as well as your heart palate. So you have ch, j, and sh, j. So here, in these four sounds, you have two articulators of passive and active nature at work. Now we come to palatal sound. You have ear. In the production or articulation of the sound, the main body of the tongue rises towards the heart palate. You have the heart palate as passive articulator and the main body of the tongue is your active articulator. Now coming to velar sounds. Velar sounds you have k, g. Now these three sounds they are produced when the back of the tongue rises towards the soft palate which is also called velar. Hence the name velar sounds. And the last is glottal sound. You have only one sound in this category that is H and it is produced somewhere in the gut. So students I think it must be clear by this time as to how these consonantal sounds are categorized and produced. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you.